Have you ever wondered how it would feel to encounter an unidentified flying object on a lonely road? On a chilly day in the middle of the Argentinian winter July 3, 1960, Captain Niotti found himself in just such a situation. Driving from Yacanto toward Cordoba, the weather was anything but pleasant. A drizzle fell intermittently from a sky laden with low-hanging clouds, while the road beneath his wheels was slick and treacherous. Niotti, a seasoned officer of the Argentinian Air Force, was no stranger to demanding situations. Yet, this drive required his full attention, his eyes fixed on the slippery road ahead, hands tightly gripping the steering wheel. As he navigated a wide S-curve in the vicinity of Villa General Belgrano, roughly 70 kilometers from the city of Cordoba, something unusual caught his eye. An object, out of place and peculiar, hovered near the ground to the right of the road. This was not something he could simply drive past. Startled yet intrigued, Niotti brought his car to a halt. His instincts took over. Reaching for his camera that was resting on the passenger seat, he quickly exited the vehicle. With each step towards the strange object, the world around him seemed to hush as though holding its breath. The drizzle paused, the wind stood still, and even the usual hum of his car engine faded into an almost eerie silence. As he raised his camera, Niotti observed the object moving slowly, its form and movement unlike anything he had ever encountered. His finger pressed the shutter, capturing what would become one of the most compelling pieces of evidence in UFO history. But just as he was winding the film for a second shot, the object did something unexpected. It began to accelerate. Swiftly, silently, it cut through the air, gaining speed at an incredible rate. As abruptly as it had appeared, the object started to accelerate, disappearing into the low-hanging clouds. Can you imagine standing there in the drizzling rain, staring at a conical object hovering silently? Captain Niotti certainly could, and the object he observed was unlike anything he'd ever seen. It was conical in shape, towering seven to eight meters high, with a base diameter of three to four meters. The object was hovering, its axis almost parallel to the ground, the base facing directly towards him. It was a mere 80 to 100 meters away, moving slowly towards the south, its rotation matching the pace. Then the object accelerated rapidly, reaching a speed of perhaps 200 kilometers per hour in just three or four seconds. All of this happening in a deafening silence that amplified the eerie atmosphere. The object's color, a uniform dark gray, the surface smooth without joints or rivets, giving it an unmistakably metallic aspect. Just like that, in a matter of seconds, the object vanished, leaving Captain Niotti in a state of puzzled confusion. What would you do if you had just witnessed a UFO? Would you tell someone or keep it to yourself? Imagine being in Captain Niotti's shoes, an officer of the Argentinian Air Force, faced with the surreal aftermath of an encounter with the unknown. This wasn't just an ordinary day in July, it was the day when the boundaries of Niotti's reality were pushed, bent and forever altered. Niotti, initially hesitant, decided to share his extraordinary experience with a select few of his fellow officers. After all, who could resist the magnetic pull of such a story? It was a tale that refused to remain untold, a narrative that found its way to the pages of the Revista Nacional de Aeronautica, Argentina's official aviation magazine. The editors of the magazine, intrigued by the incident, forwarded the photo to the Servizio de Informazione de Aeronautica, a technical service available to the Air Force. Their verdict, the photo was authentic, a genuine unaltered snapshot of an unidentified flying object. This was no small matter. In November of 1960, the sighting was reported by the Revista Nacional de Aeronautica, marking a significant moment in Argentina's history. The armed forces had publicly acknowledged the results of a UFO investigation, an unprecedented move that spoke volumes about the credibility of Niotti's encounter. In the years that followed, the photograph underwent multiple examinations. Yet despite the skeptics and the naysayers, no one could negate the authenticity of the image. It stood the test of time, a silent testament to an event that had once unfolded on a drizzly winter afternoon in the outskirts of Cordoba. And so, the incident remains one of the best recorded UFO sightings in Argentina, a silent witness to the mysteries that exist beyond our understanding. A peculiar object, both in form and nature, its shape, a perfect cone, was a striking sight against the dull backdrop of the sky. The base of this cone, a deep black, contrasted sharply with its lighter upper body, a detail that only became apparent upon developing the film. 
Surprisingly, despite being oriented towards the sun, the base showed no gradation of color. It was as if it absorbed all radiation, reflecting no light, a detail that made it even more curious. The base's edges, sharp and well-defined, were clearer than any other element in the photograph. Equally puzzling was the object's silence. Despite being no more than 50 meters away from Captain Neotti, the object made no sound. A silence that heightened the mystery surrounding the object. Yet, another intriguing detail in the photograph was the presence of a horse. This creature, usually indifferent to traffic, had its head turned towards the object, its attention seemingly captivated by the oddity in the sky. The horse's presence, however, proved to be fortuitous. It allowed Argentinian investigators to estimate the size and distance of the object. The cone was about 7 meters in height, 6 meters in diameter, and floated 17 meters above the ground. But the most unexpected revelation came when Captain Neotti inspected the photograph. To his surprise, he had not noticed the horse during the incident. This oversight indicated his immense concentration while taking the photo and his subsequent disorientation after the object's sudden departure. The photograph, taken by a high-ranking officer of the Argentinian Air Force, provided remarkable evidence of this single witness encounter. Yet, due to the witness's association with the Air Force, the case received little publicity until 17 years later, but the strangest part was yet to come. After snapping the photo, Captain Neotti was left in utter disbelief. The world around him, which had been so familiar, was now a stage for the inexplicable. Captain Neotti's reaction to the incident was one of sheer astonishment. He had been confronted with an anomaly that defied his understanding of reality. It was an encounter that would linger in his mind, a puzzle that would never fully be solved. Adding to the enigma, when he later inspected the copies of the photograph, he was taken aback by the presence of a horse, a horse that he hadn't noticed during the incident. The animal appeared to be looking directly at the object, seemingly as intrigued by the anomaly as Captain Neotti himself. This detail is intriguing. It indicates the level of Captain Neotti's disorientation in the face of the unexpected spectacle. This photograph, a silent witness to the event, became the subject of meticulous analysis. Argentinian investigators armed with their tools and expertise began to dissect the captured image. They performed intricate photogrammetry, using the horse as a reference point for their calculations. Their findings? The object was closer than one might think, a mere 50 meters from Captain Neotti. The estimated dimensions of the anomaly were equally startling. A cone standing 7 meters tall, 6 meters in diameter, and suspended 17 meters above the ground. These estimates aligned closely with Captain Neotti's own account, lending further weight to his extraordinary claim. But let's not forget this was a single witness case. The sole witness, a high-ranking officer of the Argentinian Air Force, Captain Hugo F. Neotti, his encounter, supported by a remarkable photograph, thrust him into a narrative larger than himself. The incident did not derail his military career. Contrary to what one might expect, he climbed the ranks, eventually becoming a vice commodore. But the enigma of the incident remained, a silent question mark hanging over his distinguished service. This encounter, a single witness case supported by a remarkable photograph, leaves us questioning. What was that object in the Argentinian sky?